Hi, my name is Christian, and this is my bandsaw mill. Let me show you around. So, uh, this right here is the bed, and I apologize, I'm not the best camera person in the world, but this is the bed for the mill. Uh, it's made up primarily of just a one and a half by one and a half square uh, stock with, um, or tube stock, and uh, some angle iron welded on. The paint job is partially finished, I just wanted to get some paint on before we get some snow in the coming weeks. Um, and uh, you can see, just got some standard pressure treated lumber for the sills for the logs to sit on. Got a pipe welded across, took a log clamp. The base down here allows it to be slid back and forth. The top allows for some finer adjustment once you get it close to the log. Let's see, over here we have a place for log stops. This is just a piece of threaded rod that's been welded. It's, uh, all the welding's been done outside. I know that's galvanized, but I um, figure if there's a good strong breeze and I'm not standing directly over it, it should be fine. But this is just made out of some uh, scrap. I've got a little bit of foam here in the side. I'm going to cut that off and uh, paint over it. It's just to keep uh, the water from collecting inside. But just a piece of uh, standard black pipe. I think it's a three-quarter inch pipe. Um, you can get at the local hardware store. Um, so there's a nut that's been welded into a little area that I've ground here. And if I tighten it up, this one I actually haven't installed yet. This one's just brand new, built it a couple days ago. But turn this in. Oh, sorry. And there we go. That is now locked in place. That's not shouldn't be going it going anywhere. Um, over here, this is what it looks like in practice. Um, I've got these pieces here as uh, supports for the pipe. They don't go, the bottom piece doesn't go down so uh, terribly far. This gives it something to push against that's a little bit reinforced here. Um, this right here shows the gap between the two pieces. Uh, there's actually, sorry, three pieces, two pieces here. The bed itself has three pieces uh, of track. Uh, two of which are mostly painted, and uh, they're each about, I think, seven feet long? It's been a while since I measured. It's whatever size I got. Um, here's the saw head. Um, this was a ton of fun to make. These are uh, just standard, I think, 26-inch motorcycle wheels. Got them at a local shop uh, for a guy who actually got them for cheap because the guy was going to be shutting down in a few months. But this is the adjustment mechanism. There is a pipe, it's actually the same pipe that I used for the log stops, uh, with a shaft going through. And by tightening or loosening this uh, nut on the bolt that's welded to the pipe in here, it will move the shaft back and forth inside that slot. And the adjustment works the same. Sorry if you get seasick. <laughs> on the other side as well. So this provides both tensioning and tracking adjust. In addition, if, if I need additional tension, I can also put more air in the tires, which is something that uh, Mike Festiva talked about when he changes the blade. Um, here is a very simple, but pretty eff uh, efficient or effective. Um, oh, what the heck is this thing called? Um, blade guide, sorry. So this, as the blade moves back and forth, keeps it in line. It's currently loose right now. I actually have not cranked these down. Do that now. Well, I'll leave it loose just to show that this moves back and forth on this. Move it about here and crank it in. That should be about there. Okay. So that allows for the adjustment. There's also vertical adjust on here as well. Um, and there is slightly different um, blade guide over here. That one is actually welded permanently in place even though it looks like it's built to be adjustable. Uh, I ended up uh, breaking that during part of the move and assembly process. Um, I built it at a different location. And um, it's uh, just not as strong as it should be. So if you look in there, you can see I've tried to weld it back together but ended up just tacking the whole thing in place. Which should be strong enough. Um, here is the idler wheel. Pretty standard setup, just a shaft going through. Um, 
and coming around to the back. Battery on the ground, some jumper cables. There is throttle coming off of here. Used to be hooked up, but because it's been cold and I was rough on the plastic, I ended up shattering it, so I'll have to replace that. This is just a standard uh, Kohler 12 horsepower motor. It's actually the same one Mike, or the same class that Mike Festiva used. Um, I was, just got it off Craigslist. Um, tank that's been, uh, I guess you'd call that mounted to the back of it. <laughs> it's a loose uh, use of the word. Um, coming around back, we've got um, these vertical pieces for travel for the saw head. Um, and I've got some furniture pads, plastic with a little bit of felt on them in here. And this keeps this uh, channel aligned pretty darn well. I have these uh, pulleys on either end with this crank. So as I crank up or... Actually, I can't do this one-handed. I might be able to. There we go. Down. Um, it moves the whole saw head. And even though there's a, there's a little bit of friction, there's enough weight because of the motor that it moves up and down nicely. Over here, you can see I have this funky looking thing here. That's actually a cherry wood pulley because I haven't bothered to actually get a real one. But let's see if I can get a good shot of this. If I pull this up and lock it in, I just have it sitting in a little notch here. This puts a ton of tension on the belt. Let me go back around to the front without stepping on anything. So I've got the pulley here, or rather the, the idler for the um, for the belt there. A uh, pulley on the shaft. That's reasonably secured. Um, and this is going to be a little bit tricky getting a shot of. But behind here, you can see how I've mounted the pulley to the wheel. So this pulley is riding on the shaft reasonably uh, secure and then I've weld so the, the wheel itself is aluminum and I at the time did not have the ability to weld anything to aluminum so what I've done instead is I've mounted a brake pad the, which is at least the, the outer part is steel and I welded little bits of scrap on here which sit between the spokes of the pulley and this has for me has worked really really well and um, I haven't really had any problems with it um, which is a little bit surprising. Um, this is how it rides along the track. It's just a standard uh, cheap little V-belt um, pulley that's been mounted uh, to, the, um, to, the, to the base piece here. I think that's most of, that's most of the build right there. Um, I've had to replace some of the uh, uh, bearings when I originally put this thing together, but overall it was a pretty straightforward build. It's mostly finding the right parts at the right time and getting them shipped.
And there you have it. That is one, well actually two, but one full slab cut on the mill. This is some beautiful, beautiful walnut. And uh, this is a relatively flat surface. There are a couple waves. I should probably up the uh, amount of tension just a little bit on here. But man, this, uh, this walnut is just something else. This is, just to give you an idea about how thick this is, this is if I had to take a guess, uh, about five quarter, six quarter. Um, I don't really have projects in mind at the moment for this, but I figure once I, it spends half a year to a year drying, I probably will. Um, the uh, log stops worked like a charm. The log didn't budge at all. This setup worked just, just well. 
um, just as well. So, well, I think that's all I've got for today. I hope you enjoyed, and I uh, should be posting more of these uh, in the next few weeks. See you around.